making the arms. I see you then. Hi everyone, welcome. I'm Carly from Carly's Creative Clay. I hope you've all had a good week. Um, 
mine has been pretty good same old same old hi fairy hedgehogs lovely to see you here right let's show you where we got up to i did a whole lot of smoothing down as you can see same bumps everywhere but they're all just smoothed in there were a few things that i did that um was more than just smoothing in if you can see down the sides there are muscle groups i literally just took a ball tool and went round and gently scored them in oh everything from below that set of muscle groups is going to be goat legs so fur will happen but well clay simulated fur um the other thing i did obviously i made a couple of nipples because mammal and <clears throat> i shaped in a collarbone all i did was pinch the clay along and then use a ball tool to bring up those two tendons in the neck so you just literally go in and start to push out that, that gap the only reason why i did them off camera was before i went to bake it i realized if i didn't do that i would have to add extra clay it would have been difficult whereas i thought um there weren't enough clay and i'll be building that up with his arms today so live and learn but where we're at today is we're on to doing some nice muscly arms for him um these are the positions that i think that i want for the arms so a hand on the hip and one hand up so we're back to our skin clay um if you want to see how i got to this stage there's a video on my youtube of last week's um clay session right <clears throat> skin tone is white magenta brown and gold and orange sorry almost forgot the orange that's how you end up with that nice tanned color so the only other thing to bring out is my action man doll just to give me a better idea visually of the arm muscles so i stick him to one side now sorry if the colors are looking a bit weird um jamie's trying to work on it i'm just starting out <clears throat> with two bits of clay and the thing that's important is that your whatever you do for one arm you're doing the same for the other arm so they are pretty much the same size if you're worried you can weigh them but then that will mean when i sculpt with this which i think will be a bit too much clay i can then weigh out what i've got left and deduct that from that ball and i know that i'm not using i'm not going to end up with one arm that's bigger than the other so let's double check they're the same weight it's worth doing so 104.5 103.5 so let's take one gram off of that 104.0 i know it seems fiddly but you don't want to get it where one arm has more clay on it than the other arm because that would look so odd it's much easier to get it wrong if you're not weighing these little desktop small weighing scales they i got that for a tenner 10 pound for making sure that i've got something just to back up what i'm doing right i always like to start with balls of clay i find it easier so 
what I'm going to do, hmm, yeah, right, thin it out a bit and make turn it into a bit more of a log shape. Then I am going to get my needle tool and just start a hole through the middle, like so. We will meet it up in that direction like that just so that when I start to thread this onto the arm it's got somewhere to go see like that now the tricky bit will be getting it around that bend and what I suggest is you just slowly work it it does create a bigger hole there don't worry about that we'll come back around and fix that up what's important is see there's an air gap there that that gets pushed closed and pushed over your baked clay because the first thing we're going to do is make sure that we got it joint otherwise you'll find it will slide around on your model and be really just annoying you so just squidging it so that I've not got too much of an overlap that I'm burying work that I've already done can you see I'm pushing in there make sure it's all the way around that it's properly pushed on and joined on we will smooth out that gap in a little bit sorry smooth out that join line rather right <clears throat> which is what I'm going to do now so get me put my favorite tools the colors will match once it's baked as well, yes the colors match when it bakes it's exactly the same clay that I've used but it does show that the colors do change very slightly in the oven and some of that is just really guesswork on your end product so I'm just getting a ball tool and I'm going to use this side to roll it down to join so that you haven't got that big jump down and then the end just to start to smooth it in okay I know he's wobbling around a bit we're going to sort that out when we add the legs there we go I'm burying his scapula a little bit there but it's fine and do make sure that you do join under the armpit as well so upside down come underneath use the side of your metal ball tool to just roll it so it's starting to have that flat lip that you can then smooth in <clears throat> I find that it is important to have a lot of different size ball tools because they um, you've got to get the right one for the gap that you're trying to smooth out in or it doesn't get right down to the crack now I'll show you this can you see whoop under the armpit it's really quite scruffy there yeah don't worry about that the main thing you're trying to do at this stage is get the raw clay firmly secured to the baked clay now I know Sculpey does something called bacon bond which is like a liquid clay but it just helps raw clay adhere to um, baked clay a bit better I haven't gone into using that because I use FIMO which bakes at a different temperature and FIMO does not have their own equivalent. I have tried it with liquid FIMO. People have said that works pretty well. Um, I find even with the smallest amount because it, you're then trying to join on to a liquid surface when you try and push on it it just skates the clay around. I've not found that just literally adding your raw clay to your baked clay like this has ever formed a problem. So I'm just coming along with my finger and just smoothing out 
that join line the other thing that can be useful is your little rubber tipped tool just to get it so that it those scruffy bits are no longer scruffy because young people have smooth skin and if that's what we're aiming for which i think it is we want to smooth it all out nicely and it is far e sorry i know i'm off the camera i'm just trying to check out a tricky part there we go it's far easier at this stage to get this looking right than it is to try and come back later right i'll give you a look in two seconds because i'm almost there with them if you want to you can do both sides at the same time so leave it at that stage then add the other arm on and shape the top of the muscle then shape the top of the other arm so you're doing jumping from one to the other but i tend to just do one and then do the other so can you see how blended that looks now there's not really a join line there little bit up by the neck but get your sorry get your finger in there and just smudge it in i love the word smudge it's so actively correct all the time sorry i got it's trying to make it so that i can see what i'm doing it's just up by the neckline but i am going to end up adding more clay around the neck to um fill that up before i put the head on so i'm not so bothered about that but yeah there's the join line <clears throat> so now it's fully secured on you can see you can't tug it around so that gives you a much better place to start shaping so that out the way now we're going to start off with the muscle at the very top of the arm there it's not actually as well defined on this picture but i'll show you what i'm going to do we're going to pinch in around the top where that muscle is like that smooth it out but we're going to bring it right the way down because we need to get to an elbow and this is it's more experienced than anything else trying to remember and feel where your wire is and can you see we're still all torn up up there don't worry i'm getting on to that at the moment i'm just trying to shape the top of that arm a lot more and if you can see i'm making sure i'm pushing all the way around not just on one side of it yeah and just keep going around little adjustments all the time so we're now down to that and i want to sorry kids playing outside i want to bring it around and address all that messed up bit there so what i'm going to do is i'm going to fold up that air pocket but make sure i push from the sealed side out to the open side so that we are not trapping air trapped air is not your friend now we need to leave a bit of a forearm muscle Let's move that out of the way a bit like so and i will come in and address the elbow bend <clears throat> and forming an elbow properly on the other side i'm just allocating clay right now so can you see how we're getting there with that so far yeah quite muscly quite big now at this stage i'm going to come in anything with a thinner flat side like your <coughs> sorry i'm falling over my words <coughs> like the needle tool you could use that and most of the metal tools that you can get off of line will be good for this job we're just going in where that elbow crease would be and putting that 
actually into his arm now it does leave a bit of a jump down so I'm just going to smooth out that part so it doesn't look like there's just a semicircle crater okay like so see Oop. just that crease in there makes it look a lot more realistic then you follow the crease round and you come up on the other side and we're going to form an elbow and we're just going to pinch clay back up off that bump and straighten it out I know it looks too big and pointy but what you do then is you just tap the tip with your thumb or your finger and it looks far more just smooth that out there we go like that looks far more realistic like a bent arm now I can see that muscle is a bit too far up his arm there so I'm just going to push it up a bit smooth out there there we go so it just takes a bit of fiddling to get your muscles in the right place like so I am pretty pleased with that so far we want to now bring it down so we've got some wrist going on right keep pinching and going around in a little circle like so there we go we're down to a wrist right what do you think look more like an arm looks good to me yeah and it's blending into the scapula well just going to move that around like that <clears throat> so a slight bit of fiddling around there we are now we're going to go into this hand and i can see the end is all bumpy so what we're going to do is first smooth that off now when you're doing this make sure you don't put the tip of that wire through the wrist so be careful don't just focus on smoothing out that lump because if you do put it through you can fix it bring it back up push on any air gap it's caused plug the hole up with a bit of clay and smooth it all back out again but it's far easier just to make sure you don't do it in the first place so we're now down to that stumpy look one of the things that I've always had a big problem with is making sure the thumb is on the right side so I don't end up with two left hands or two right hands now picture it my body's here your thumbs face if you're facing them towards the top the inwards towards you <clears throat> so Yvette Martin says evening evening Evie first thing I'm gonna do is allocate for that thumb Evie now says, I see man boobs yeah we are making a mammal they look really weird when you don't include them unless it's a platypus apparently unless it's a platypus yes me and Jamie have had this whole argument I was like all mammals have nipples it wasn't an argument it was a debate he goes except platypus I say platypus were put on this earth just to be the exception of the rule to everything if you're trying to um, categorize animals you kind of got to ignore that one right so he's got a thumb up now and a mitten Hedgehog says, or if you're American, I don't. right? I'm just going to shape the fingers, and all I'm doing is pushing 
down where the fingers would be and making sure I'm not getting rid of that raised bit on the palm yet. <clears throat> I sound really croaky. Does Sorry, guys. Americans are anti nipple. Oh, uh, yeah, I do get when I share this on actual clay groups, so art groups, people doing a that's disgusting. I'm like, really? It doesn't make any sense. Really? Especially the right. So, we've now got a mitten, and let's see, can I give you thicknesses? Right, the fingers are thin, and the centre is raised to the height of the wrist. And I squidged the fingers in a little semicircle to create the bumps for the top of your hand there. So... I'm going to shape out the palm of the hand before I do anything about cutting those fingers. Now, let's talk hands. We've got a raised little, almost like a um, jelly bean shape that's slightly divided down where your fingers yeah, are. Sorry. If you turn it sideways, yeah. you can see the Can you see? Bit. That bit's raised. And then we're going for a dip there. Now the shape of the dip, if you take the thumb and then draw that bit, it looks like a chicken drumstick. Yeah? <laughs> so true. you've got a chicken drumstick, jelly bean or sausage, and then a slight raised bump there that's in line with the rays of your jelly bean so the center the dipped in bit is a rounded sided triangle yeah think y fronts that sort of shape now the easiest way to do that is instead of building up all the different raised bits is literally just come in and draw out your wire fronts on the front of your hand and then pat that down okay then all of the top raised bits is the same sort of height as the wrist at that point even though I'm going to squidge it down slightly because if you see the wrist the raised bits are slightly higher than where your wrist starts yeah technical chicken egg jelly beans and wife fronts mm -hmm. says, i said man boobs and my browser crash i missed you talking about platypus being the exception to the rule of having nipples don't worry i will rewind later to see what i missed right. i just think i need to be careful with my use of man boobs word <laughs> big brother is watching <laughs> oh dear this world is in a sorry state when we cannot accept that we all have nipples Right, how you hold your modi model when you do this is going to make a big difference to whether it's easy to do or you create a complete mess, snap the hand off, a whole lot of trouble. Support, put your model on its side. This is why I baked the base and the abdomen's baked already so I can't smudge it all up. I can really focus on supporting that arm. Now can you see, I've got the elbow in the crook of my hands and I'm bending those fingers up to support the whole of that palm. Yeah? Well, the back of the hand. What I normally do is rest the base against my chest so it can't wobble around, which I'm going to try and do. I'm sorry if it looks a bit dodgy. It's also a bit harder to do than frame in the camera. Yeah. So... Get the right size ball tool. I'm probably going to go for a smaller one. So the first bit is let's get those, the jelly bean shape in. So like that. There we go. Then we need to get the bottom part for the chicken drumstick. Like that. And then the small little bump along the side. So we're just marking it out. 
that would do it I think and then I'm going to get a bigger ball tool and push that centre flat and smooth it all in like so and if you leave lots of crease marks it kind of looks a bit weird I think the next thing to do is I'm going to define Evie says those man boobs do look a bit enhanced I love the clavicle bone detail you've marked out thank you it was just literally pinching along the edge right so we kind of got that indent looking right I think but I need to work on the thumb placement and how I'm going to do that is I put it back up on so it's standing up right support around the back and underneath and use the side of my needle tool just to come in and really get that dip down and then I can bring the thumb tip to the length that I want see that looks far more like it yeah and the palms are looking right I know it looks a bit flat but as you start to curve the hand because it does look very flat when you've got your hand spread out like that it will get its shape a bit more Evie says oops I think I'm obsessed I like typing and hearing Jamie saying man boobs long time <laughs> I promise <laughs> Oh dear. Right. For the fingers. These are your friend. They're the tiny little nail scissors. You can. The thicker the scissor you use. The harder it's going to be. You can use a blade. But I find. When you use a blade. You're more likely to push the clay. To one side. And end up with a lip. But. Before you cut mark out where you want your fingers now there's four of them Evie says hand looks great to me thank you i think it does too so four fingers so that's one two three and four so little score lines if you're keeping your hands together you can just do scores but I'm going in with scissors now this is another one of those points where if you cut it wrong it's going to be a pain to fix that's why I score so, there we go now so we've got four spread out fingers but can you see the tips of them are quite squared this is the next fiddly bit we're going to splay the fingers and use the tip of the ball tool just to tap on them to round them over so on any of the corners and if your finger ain't long enough so we've got shorter the next one slightly longer so this one needs to go up a bit so what I do is I splay the fingers out, get in there at the side, pinch and pull. Do you need both hands? Yes, because there we go. Pinch and pull. Place, there we go. Like that. Then this one, next one along, longer than that finger. So let's tap that down even more. Like that this one goes a bit longer let's spread them out again whoops make sure you don't rip them at the base you're coming in at the side pinching and rounding so that it's shaped how you want that one's a bit pointed so you fiddle around and where this one I want a lot shorter I'm going to go down like that and push the clay back on itself to shrink it down so I'm happy with that all I've got to do is there's a little split line on where it was cut I'm just smoothing that back in so any cracks 
that appear you want to try and get rid of at this stage. That's going to be a fiddle. That's kind of it. There we go. What do you reckon? So we're now at that. I think that little finger's too fat, personally. Let's make it longer and then trim the top off, I think. Because you don't want a fat little finger. It'll look weird. There we go. Right. That's thin enough. Let's shrink its height. Just snip off that bit of extra clay. And round those ends back off. Right. That looks better to me. What do you reckon? So that's the inside of the hand done. Yeah. Then we can now bend it back into the shape that we want. So we're going to bend. So there's a bit more of an arch across that. Top jelly bean shape. Bring the fingers over a bit round there. I want to have him waving. So just pose it up how you want. Remember that bone does not bend in the middle. So you bend at wrists only. Okay? It's an easy mistake to make. Now, on the back, we have got raised knuckle bumps. So, you can either allocate some clay by making sure you don't smudge the other side. Just push up and then push down along that side. Can you see I'm starting to get a line? Whoop. Like that. So we're going to just do that in a curved shape and then down to that line we're going to smooth the skin back so that it's slightly raised there. Then we come in, where's my finished ball tools, really tiny tinies and start to divide out some of those knuckles. Once I've done it, I will come and show you. Don't worry. Just give me a minute. Now, make sure you're not smudging out all the detail that was on the underside. So that's the start of it. They are still looking very... Can you focus? Square and blocky. So we still have to come in and push on each of the corners to turn them into little rounder shapes. Be very, very gentle, just gentle fiddles. There we go. That looks far more like it. Yeah. Then the last thing well, on the back of the hand anyway, is you can trace in between where the fingers go. There's slight dips. You can come in. You need a very, very thin ball tool or yeah, I'd say a very thin ball tool and you're being very gentle. Just hinting at some tendons it's not focusing well can you see the lines that are there yeah I'm talking about the lines on the back of the hands there they are still a little bit square I will come in and fiddle with them a bit more and also smooth out the fingers. But that is my normal. Whenever I 
sculpt I need to come back the next day and do lots more fiddling now for fingernails all you're going to do is come in with tiny 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 balls of clay same color I use as the rest of the skin and you push it into a little disc because can you see they're pretty much oval shapes you just got to make sure that you get the width right for the width of the finger and you stick that directly on the tip of the finger right let's give you a look uh, tip of that finger can you there you go sorry can you see there's now a little finger now ish right just make sure that it's not too raised above the finger so do push it down a bit you can also score in some lines and bend the fingers over at the knuckles but where I've got such a short hand well such a small hand I think it's going to be harder for me to do that now where I'm doing a guy I'm doing quite stubby fingernails rather than if I was doing a woman I'd be more likely to do a longer shaped fingernail for her now just quickly go through do the last four and then I can show you the finished hand I think I will come in and score in some um, just a few knuckles but again you've got to be doing the gentlest little impressions in the clay because they really don't show up that much and where it's such a small hand it's more likely to look exaggerated right just got the fun to do I've really got to smooth up the side of those fingers there we go right fingernails can you focus see now it looks like they've got actual fingernails so the difficulty will be in doing this exactly the same for the other hand that is never easy the first one is always the easiest to do and I think that will be the same no matter how much experience I ever get of claying just moving in that side there we go right sorry you can see I get drawn in and I fiddle like all the time so yeah second arm I'm not planning on really mm. cuz bending the wire once you've got the clay on it can be hard I mean what you could do is put it out straight push it on and then put the elbow back in place but you don't want to sculpt a straight arm and then try and bend it afterwards um, right, because well, bending it out straight so you can thread it in the first so place. I can thread it yeah how have I got cat hairs on things <sighs> the joys of living with a cat even if they're not allowed in the same room as your clay so same again hold down the middle so that it's got something to thread onto and through the hole onto the arm come on there we are right 
pushing out the air and bringing that up to the shoulder so that we can join it on making sure that we definitely are not trapping air bubbles between that join I find if I move too fast with the clay you're more likely to trap an air bubble than if you just go slowly little pushes all the way around like that now now it's roughly secured in I'm going to bring that elbow back into play like that now can you see if I started trying to sculpt it's just trying to move away so it's really important that you get a firm and proper join between your raw and your bait before you start trying to do any shaping whatsoever so same thing again we are coming in and just blending that lip over once you can feel that it's properly attached if you're worried that there's an air bubble somewhere just stab it with your needle tool push out any air and then bring the join together bring the hole back together rather better to get it out and then deal with the the blemish than it is to leave it in and have a piece that breaks and not only does it break because it's got an air bubble it's really hard to glue it back together because they've got them fill the cavity not good form right it does come along pretty quickly which is good <coughs> now like I said, I'm not doing so much detail around the sh top of the shoulder where the neck's going to join because I know I'm going to need to add more clay and it'll probably end up over the top of this clay. So there's no point me spending ages working on it. Oh, on a side note, I got stickers for my phones. I didn't. Isn't it cool? What do the air bubbles do? Right, an air bubble, if you're dealing with ceramics, when you were had it in the kiln, it would just literally explode because the air um, expands. That doesn't happen with your polymer clay because it's quite a flexible material. As it expands, it will either push the um, clay into a slightly different shape or it will crack the outside and escape through the crack but the biggest problem is where it forms a bubble all that circle where the air is has no clay so what you thought was a couple of centimeters thick piece of clay is actually two millimeters in a bridge formation so it's far more likely to break and once it does break and you discover that big air pocket you haven't got two flat surfaces to glue back together you've got a great big cavity so it all depends on whether it goes because some pieces probably live their whole life with an air bubble that nobody knows about and that's fine it's when it goes that it's a big old problem and just as an FYI don't use super glue on your polymer clay it's almost always gonna come off after a few months because it reacts with the clay two-part epoxy is what I suggest for people trying to mend their polymer clay items I love the stuff I know epoxy has a lot of horror stories involved like people coming out in rashes and awful awful stuff that tends to be on proper poured projects 
you can get away I think with make it, doing a bit of gluing without it being absolutely risky what freaks me out is you get kits sold for kids to do acrylic um, epoxy pours to make things like key rings and stuff like that and a Gimenez says hello hello thank you for joining us I'm just fiddling around with making this next arm so allocate clay you want roughly the same size and amount as your previous arm like so yeah I joined a group on Facebook called epoxy is not your friend and yeah freaked myself out looking at all these people covered in rashes from their epoxy so yeah proper PPE if you're gonna use decent amounts of epoxy but the glue I've never found caused me a reaction and I get a reaction to everything if it's possible to come up in a rash because of something I will right I'm being really careful getting it around that bend and making sure that I refill back in any air gaps created so can you see that looks roughly no I think I've got too much up on the top arm so if you think you've allocated too much you just squeeze some down see like I'm doing like so that looks more more even yeah do you think I need to take a bit more off of there might actually do right human sculpting is the one that I fiddle the most with both on stream and off stream it's yeah most of the work of it is just fiddling around and just slightly reshaping things and rejigging things so I'm at that point I'm gonna come down and allocate some of that forearm before I get in there and really get rid of that ill-defined elbow let's bring some of that out there we go right that looks about the same as each other I think now for a bent elbow that's that bent what we're going to do is the same as before but we're going to really make far more of a defining line and I tend to like to do that with something that's more of a flat scoop type shape because where before you were just doing a crease on this one you're doing far more of a V shape let's show you Whoop. see what I mean it just starts to bring it out more I'm just gonna come that way smooth out like that so to me that looks far more like it than the slight bend on the other side right now smoothing out the wrist I know I've got a little bit of staining on the arm what I tend to do before I bake I will come over with some isopropyl alcohol and just give it a wash down because what isopropyl alcohol does I can feel I've got a bit of an air pocket going on there right I'm gonna have to stab show you what I mean then stab it in push out air and you can kind of feel an air bubble if it has a different consistency the clay flops around more it just 
happened that it would be in the hand which is one of the harder places to re-sculpt so I know it looks like I'm just pushing all that hand clay back onto the arm but it's easier to smooth out in a big chunk than it is to smooth out when you got it extended into the small bit of the hand we can reallocate it afterwards right there we go don't crack come on back together there we go yeah isopropyl alcohol melts the very top layer of your project and that will remove any dust or marks or anything that you don't want to be there uh, come on hand now what I want is to bring that through and the hand's going to be on the hip so let's see can I get a better bend and bring that hand over like so because this hand is going to be a lot easier because we're only having to do the top side because we're going to make it so that it's actually got his hands on his stomach so I'm just forming that thumb and remember top of the body is sorry top of the hand is where you're putting the thumb closest towards the body bringing it out into a, the rest of the fingers out into a mitten like so then come in with my needle tool just to give some definition on where that thumb's going to lay like that see now let's get it so that it's actually not got any curves where the bones would be and attach it to the body just getting that finger shape a bit better sorry thumb shape a bit better there we are like that see and then all we need to do is come in with our needle tool now here's an interesting fact that with some clay let's show you on my spare so I don't mess up my original some lines you want a thinner score mark than you get with the standard needle tool so that's the standard needle tool first off use the side did you see how I dragged along like that if you go from the tip and draw like you would with a pen see that jaggedy see how jagged that is that's the problem with using your, your pin or needle tool like a pen you want to lay it on its side and drag like that now that is quite a wide channel if you wanted a thinner channel for things like a very small model with its fingers close together what I found really useful is a felting needle the interesting thing about a felting needle if you look at it it's actually a triangle so there's four little called sorry three little corners and using one of those I'll show you the line that gives a bit deeper you have to be a bit more careful because it's a bit more fragile can you see it's a lot thinner sharper. it's sharper it's not such a wide channel you can wiggle the blade in that so it's worth getting a felting needle if you get one that's got a holder and your felting needle snaps don't worry you can replace them you get packs of these 
needles and what all you do is you lift you get packs like that metal little hooks and you just take that out throw it away get your new one put it back in that groove like that and you're good to go again you've got a nice cover they do them in different handle shapes and stuff like that but I did like this little wooden one they're not expensive but what you're looking for is felting needle it took me a while to discover that's what I was looking for because I'm not a felter I never really knew about that so now you've got the hand on we're going to draw those fingers in so remember you only need four two now other rookie mistake is not getting that those score lines to curve around the tips so do make sure I, that you hold it and you just push in so that, can you see, the curved lines go all the way around the tips of the finger. Yeah? I'm just going to do quite a gentle pinch up for those knuckles because he hasn't really got his fingers bent that much just a slight very very slight line and don't forget it's not a straight line it's a curved line because the hand the fingered line it's all on a sort of semicircle they're not they don't end at the same point okay I think one of my earliest hands they were all in completely straight alignment and it looks really weird right I need a very 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 fine ball tool just to start to pick out some of these knuckles like so there we are and the little details are what's going to really make it look realistic <clears throat> so I think that's looking good there can you see it's almost not visible those knuckles just slightly there and I'm going to do a few little lines for where the indentions <clears throat> for your tendons will be if you go too deep or it looks too clear just give a very gentle stroke and it will come out and fade out a bit more so like that all I've got to do now is fingernails on that hand I'm probably going to come around and fiddle to make those shoulders look a little bit better and a bit smoothed in things like that nothing really drastic this time i'm just going to fiddle around but that is basically it if you see they are quite even and quite mirrored he is pretty muscly the other thing you can do if you really want to define muscle come in at a diagonal like this with your sorry with your needle tool and we're going to go around like that and just bring that up slightly so that it's got a bit more of a raised to the rest of the arm like so I know it looks scruffy at the moment but when you come in with your finger and you start to smooth that in it looks more realistic 
Let's come in, smooth in, smooth in, like that. You see what I mean? It just defines the muscle group slightly more. It looks like that's better. Yeah? It looks like the back blending needs I've got, blending. yes, I'm going to be blending in down there so that it just flows smoothly. If you find that you've got more of a dip than you want, I'll actually do this on camera because it is <clears throat> another useful thing. Get a tiny bit of clay. We're going to roll that into a very thin, tiny, tiny sausage of clay. And I'm just going to come into that gap Add that bit of clay in and smooth it down so you can build up as much as you can also take off so you just add it in and smooth it in with your ball tools I think my little ball tool set or one of my better clay tools I do have a good couple of hundred tools but these are my favourites. As a quick show off, we're talking ball tools, pin tools, some rubber tips, a palette knife, acrylic roller, factor blade. Then <clears throat> eBay does this set of metal tools that look like that is all of them little set like that you can get them <clears throat> if you put clay sculpting or candle wax sculpting you get that little set for a couple of quid then I got dental oh that's part of that set as well then I got dental tools which are these ones and having some of the curves on those is really useful. Oops, that's another one in that metal set. I really love that little spatula. It's so useful. Then you've got the bigger ball tools. Now this is the smallest two at the largest set that they sell. And they go right up to huge big balls but I never used the bigger ones but these two are really valuable so I've got the set of five just to have that then we're just down to the little ball tools all that the only other tool I've got in there is this it's for sticking for moving gems and beads around I actually have no idea what they call it because I got it as part of a Christmas present set but it comes with, it feels like either wax or something slightly sticky that you're able to push the um, bead onto and it really helps. Right, so you'll see me in this cup a lot. This one is just the largest of the wooden ball tool set but it broke because I used it too much so I covered it in clay. So yeah, a bit of an impromptu, here is, your, here is my favourite tools section. Obviously tissue blades are there as well but I don't keep them in that pot because I don't actually want to cut myself getting tools out. Very what I do in my tissue blade actually, if you've got a laminating machine, make yourself a tissue blade pouch. This one came with a blade I bought. But all you need is two bits of paper the same size as your tissue blades. Put them next to each other, laminate it, cut the tops off and then you can cut round. And you've got a nice little wallet for them. So yeah, we added in that bit of clay there. I'm just going to smooth it in using a ball tool and it can vanish away nicely and you haven't got that dip down so you can see how it really is quick you can build up spaces as much as you can take stuff off you're in charge of your clay and it's very flexible and will do what it's told 
far more I find than many other art mediums. I mean, if you start trying to draw a picture using um, charcoals, they're a nightmare to try and fix and correct and do anything with. Right, once you've got it how you want it, I'm going to put fingernails on that and fiddle with it. You'll see that there are fingerprints all over it. If you aren't going to alcohol wash it, my advice is before you bake it, come over and give it a stroke. Very, very gentle, little stroke with the fingers. And everywhere you stroke, you will get the fingerprints off. It makes a big difference because it really does notice if you've got fingerprints over everything. If you've got little areas that you really can't get your fingers into, get a soft paintbrush and do it with that. Because again, that will rub out all those fingerprints and make it look smooth and finished okay but there are definitely places on here that i'm going to alcohol wash i think those fingernails are just standing a little too prominent for me i'm just going to smudge them in just slightly there we go that's better right so here is our guy kind of top half finished i'm going to do a little bit of fiddling around whilst we are off and next week i'm going to do his legs so we're on to goat legs then um if you are making along with me you will want your brown patterned clay that is just my swirly clay. You can see it in many, many videos on the tightest of the types of swirls that I do made up into a block. That's going to be far more than I need for these legs. But yeah, that's what we're using next week. I hope you all have a really good week and that you do give human sculpting a go. I, I was intimidated by by it myself for a very long time it took my best mate kicking me up the button saying you're gonna need to face this and focus on it and I got there I'm doing better I am still a bit iffy with the faces but I've had some success stories do have a good week have a go at sculpting some people let me know what you make if you've got any problems just message me like share follow all the stuff that really helps me oh and we've been going for a year i worked this out the other day yeah. we're actually at an anniversary and um i've got over 200 subscribers on youtube so woo, it's all it's coming together considering i thought i would have no one watching it and I really wasn't sure that I was going to be able to upkeep it this long. I'm really quite pleased. And hopefully I'll be at this for... A, thank you. I'll be at this for a, another year at least. Hopefully many more. I mean, you may end up with me doing the same kind of projects over again. Because... At a higher quality. <laughs> at a higher quality. Because, yeah... There's going to come a point where I've sculpted everything. <laughs> we're still a ways from it. After this, because we're coming up to Christmas, I was thinking Christmas baubles. So, yeah, doing those and showing you how to do it with a tinfoil centre rather than spending the extortionate money that it costs to get a glass Christmas ball. Tinfoil's cheaper. And you haven't got the risk of it actually turning out not to be glass and melting in the oven. So yeah, we'll do that after this project. But next week we're on to the legs. Okay, I hope you all have a really great week. And I will see you all next week. Bye! <laughs>